Welcome to Bispadel. Today we are in M3 Padel Center, where else? And we are going to talk with Nacho Martinez. He is the mastermind of the M3 Lab. It's a big data center, just one person, but the depth of the analysis and what they are building, I think is going to create the future of Padel. Not just the analytics for the professionals, which is super important, but also for people that want to improve their game. What they are doing is taking all the raw data converting it into actions, activation data that they can put into their software and analyze how the points are being built, what are our strengths, what are our weaknesses, and how to solve that. I think that they are creating somehow like this Sauron, the eye where the, the ring is being built right now for the future. So I'm very happy to see that this is being built right now in Spain. And uh, Galan is using this, Chingoto is using this, Jorge Martinez is super involved into this project and we are lucky enough to have Nacho with us and learn from him. Nacho Martínez, eh, I'm the data analyst of N3 Padel Academy. I used to be rugby player and, and also padel player and amateur. And I was eh, also analyst in rugby and I studied sports and big data. And I, I really liked the, like the idea of transfer all the things I have learned to paddle that is a sport that is growing a lot and I really like it. Okay, so why did you decide to come to M3 with your idea? I decided because uh, as, a, as a amateur player and a fan, uh, all the players that I like most, uh, I saw they were from M3 Paddle Academy. And that moment I like investigated what was uh, M3 Paddle Academy and I saw it was uh, something that uh, identified really, really good to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, since you started working, that was a year ago, what have you been doing in order to create something that doesn't exist? So before you were here, M3 Lab didn't exist. So the first task was to structure all the project because we were uh, uh, developing from zero. Uh, once we did it, we started to develop all the all the video analysis part and how we are going to we were going to tag all the all the data. Then we develop all the scripts and prompt uh, for understanding the data and creating new uh, metrics. And then we develop the front end that is an internal now is an internal app uh, where we can see all the analysis. So. Who uses your data? Who are the main users of what you are creating? Nowadays, uh, we have two products. One is the professional. The principal users is uh, the coaches and the professional players. They have access to all the, the uh, data analysis. We, we do meetings for trying to understand everything, uh, for watching some videos that are interesting. And then we have developed uh, another uh, tool for the amateur play players. It's not uh, as deep as the as the professional product, but also the coaches, are the, the people who is tagging, they can report the players in that instant, what they are, are they doing. That's super good. And uh, there's something that really got my attention and is how you restructure all the lab. Because you start by taking like the good piece of data that you need and then build on top of that, analyzing. How was that work? Like, to me, there's a big merit of cre thinking like that and structuring the big vision and then making the parts. So how is that for you compared with rugby? Uh, in the rugby, I, I started uh, understanding what, I, what it was the, the main goal of the data, uh, also with the, with the studies. When I came here, I, I really had the, the idea of what I want really a structure and I just have to imagine what I want and how how can I uh, develop it 
I started from the with the main things that and the more general things, and from that, it's steps from the general to the particular thing. So, how is it your work every week that there's a tournament? How it works and who uses your data after that? So, when they are um, playing that week and the next week, I I tag all the all the games, and then uh, our process is really automatic. The the prompt and the scripts works automatically, and the and the refresh of the of the app is also uh, automatic. And just uh, we just need the time for tagging. All the rest they have the report. Uh, at the moment. How does the data evolve with time? I guess that when you started, you had fewer data. Now that it's been more time, you can see more things. The first thing is uh, the, like the number of data on different strokes that we tag. With the time, I am like more skilled in, the, in tagging and I can uh, tag different strokes uh, more specific data, all the rebounds, and that ta that uh, is a skill and the uh, skill development is the thing that helps nowadays for the deep of the data that we have. We have in every game all the t all the strokes, all the rebounds, all the players. Uh, if it's with the forehand, with the backhand, uh, everything that you can imagine. And um, talking about the amateurs, you also have a kind of a software version that takes the data from our game, how we play, and can also help us improve our game. What's the mission of that? Like treating the amateurs as professional to like improve their learning curve? Why did you do that and how it's going to work? So the, the software we have developed for the amateur uh, players, is because we think that it's really important to transfer what we uh, develop for the for the players, uh, uh, pro players, to the amateurs, and uh, included in our methodology. With this analysis, it's not, it's not as deep as the pros, but we can uh, transfer a lot of information from the pros with the with the data that we analyze. We we can give like. Uh, an instant report of what is happening in the court because it's true that the amateur they don't used to read, uh, keep on the mind what happened in the in the game and uh, the errors they they didn't remind it. Okay, it's true. Like usually amateurs they get the highlights but they forget what they miss what they did wrong, right? So the idea is to give you give them a objective uh, information. And also uh, try to give them a uh, easy report of how they are developing the the, the level and the skills in the different uh, months, for example, or it depends on on what they want. It's very important what you're saying. Um, how you show the data, because your tool is very well polished. Right, so when you show it, or anybody can understand it. They don't understand the script, but they understand the, say, like the front of it, yeah. right, or the front end. Why is that important in order to make a useful tool? Because I think that the more useful data is the one that you can you have not to stop a lot of time to understand. It. So the main. Uh, thing is to give something that is easy and quick to understand. Who are those players that ask you more things? Like if there's one that always wants to know more, like inside the academy. Chingoto like a lot, the data. He's always uh, looking, not just his games. When we are tagging some uh, game here from another uh, player, he always comes to see how the data is going. He is really interested in the data. And how is your relationship with Jorge, to Jorge Martinez? Because he's the head coach here and he's also a paddle legend. So how do you work with him in order to use the tool in a way that is useful for him very quickly? 
So this is a, a very good question. And uh, Jorge uh, has been completely in this project. Uh, we were developing together all, all, this, all this data, uh, all these reports, all this uh, specific analysis. And the, th the more important thing uh, for me when I was developing something is that uh, Jorge uh, think that is useful for him. And uh, now if you watch a paddle match, do you watch it as you did before or is it totally different? <laughs> that question, I really like it because everybody uh, does to me, but I, am, I don't know if it's a skill or, or whatever. I can see a game and watch a game as a regular people no matter that is not in this world of the data and the analysis, but that is only when I'm in my home watching a, like I, as a fan, it's true that I have, like, I see more things that I used to see before, but it's not the same mindset than what I'm uh, working. When I'm working, I'm totally focused all the time and there I'm with all the sense alert, and it's like two modes. Yeah. And uh, since you are here, what do you like the most of this job? That, that question is easy for me. I, what I like most in my life is to create and develop new things and develop things that they, they don't exist or is not the, as useful and try to make it a top. And uh, do you see a big difference between men and female uh, matches? It's different. Uh, it's different in the stroke that you, that you use. In the in the long of the rallies, is is different. There are similarities in all of things. It's the same sport, but there are some things that I didn't expect that I, that difference. For example, uh, men use a lot the body, and and the females use a lot the love. Is something interesting. And uh, what do you like the most? Like when you look and like, well, I, I really like, I look at this like, this is well done, something like that. There's something I, I don't know if, if they, uh, they appreciate, if they appreciate that. that or it's something that they, they really like it and that's it. But for me as developer, it's something that I really like it. And it's some change we make in the Chincotos Vibora because we, we watch something that I cannot say. In the, in the data, uh, Jorge watched it, we started to work on it, and Chingoto make a, a really, really, really uh, good change and improve on, on that area. And it's something that um, I really like it. Yeah, you feel like you've given something to, yeah. that has and, a translation in the real world. Yeah, and like it's work in this. That's great. And uh, my last question, what, what really worries you? Something that keeps you like thinking and thinking, like if I could change this, or something that I don't know, maybe for the future of Parallel keeps you a little busy thinking about that. It's, it's not easy to say one thing. <laughs> My mind is always working on it, and oh, I just finished this, and I think it's not as good as it has to be, but it's something that I work on it to see the, what I developed. From the from outside, and, but what I like the most when I finish something and it's good uh, is like, okay, I want something new. <laughs>